Good morning everyone, Taylor here and welcome to Taylor Games. Today we are going to make an entire game for free without paying for any software. But I think that covers the for free part so I don't know why I just said that. Oh god. Hope you guys like that intro because it's only ever going to get worse. But let's get straight into the video. So when I woke up, I came up with an idea to make a game without spending any money. And I'm going to teach you how I did this, but first of all, you guys need to see what the final product looks like. <coughs> yeah, calm down. I know it's simple, but you know, we have to have a simple idea to make a simple game. Remember, this video is about making a game for free, not necessarily making a good game for free. Well, we'll just explain the bits that you guys are probably interested in, which is how we made the entire game. So, first of all, let's talk about our plan. Oh, that's good. That's really good. So, to start our project off, of course, we need a theme or idea, and I just went with Cowboys vs Ninjas because it is fairly simple, and the idea that I had in mind was actually a top-down camera, of course, panning over a little bit of a map where things spawn a bit like Nazi zombies. Once we have our idea, we want to plot down every single thing we need so that we can stick to sort of a schedule of how we're going to do this, and also we want to predict how long it's actually going to take us so we know when we need to speed up or slow down on certain things and when we have more time to actually work on something. For example, this entire game took me roughly around three to four hours. I did predict three, but it ended up being around four. At the same time, it is a very good prototype in case I ever wanted to work on it some more. It's pretty much all there. All you need to do is add sort of the finer details, add a bit of more progression and a bit more enjoyment for you players out there. But we managed to get everything into a game fairly quickly. So that's pretty important. So the way I like to start a project is by making the programmable graphics and what I mean by this is that the graphics that we're actually going to need to program, for example stuff that isn't programmable graphics would be stuff that is used in the map design and all that type of stuff. Anything that moves or anything that we control or is being controlled by AI, I consider programmable graphics, which is not an official term, I just make that up, it comes from here. So I downloaded Magica Voxel, which is a voxel editing software because I suck at modeling and animation. So in this software, I decided to create, of course, the cowboys, the ninjas, some bullets and some shuriken th something throwing stars. Since the voxel editing software is extremely fast and it is actually quite fun to use, when I kept to my schedule, I was like, I can actually spend a bit more time on this. So I decided to make a few models for rocks and grass and of course some fences so that we can actually build a map. Now it's important to have your game looking like a game because then it keeps the motivation up for yourself and um, a lot of people say that hey I lose motivation halfway through a project and it's probably because you're not seeing enough progression for you to be like hey this is actually going to be finished. So with the spare time that I had I actually started modeling a lot more things so that we can actually add it to our scene and it can look really cool. All the models are done they have been textured within the program we are going to export them as OBJ and drag them into our Unity project. When we import stuff from Magica Voxel every cube is actually one meter by one meter in Unity which means that we have to shrink stuff down so I shrinked everything down to about 10% it gave kind of the look I wanted everything was to ratio except for the rocks which I left a bit bigger just in case we wanted to sort of we can just slide them and make them bigger and smaller as we need. I should be programming but I decided to make the map first because that's just what kind of gets you rolling, it kind of gets you into the oh this is a game. So I made the map and then I started programming in mono develop and we of course use C sharp in this household. The reason why I like C sharp over JavaScript is because C sharp is a lot more tidier. It, when I was learning it was a lot easier to understand things that were structured very well. When it came to JavaScript I barely understood something while I was looking at it but C sharp always kept like sort of it's, it's it looks a bit more formal when you're using it. But if you understand JavaScript better then this is perfectly fine. In Mono Develop, I actually made a script for the ninjas, the cowboys, the bullets, and of course the shuriken. And we also have a manager function, which we are going to use to spawn everything, to play sounds, because it's the only thing in our game that is going to be alive the entire time. I'm not going to go too deep into the scripts for the video, but if you guys want to check out all the scripts, I've actually made a paste bin down in the description. It should be some links, and hopefully you guys enjoy that. So I programmed everything to its core. So there's very basic stuff on there that we can finally use. 
So I used a click to move script to kind of get our characters to move around the map. And if you don't know how to do that, I do have a tutorial up online already. Again, if you want to take a look at the scripts, they are down in the description below. But the click to move is pretty basic and I use it for both characters. So it's quite important there. That's pretty much it, the game is playable, except it is missing a few core components, one of which is of course sound and music. For me, music is the fun part, so I decided to go with a bit of a western theme, something I've never actually done before, and the only sort of country song I know is Dolly Parton's Jolene. So I just strummed some chords in a very western feel, I did a bit of a whistle and then added reverb to both, and it sounded like this. Which I think is pretty simple enough, for a basic game it is most definitely all we need. Next up of course is sound effects, and for this I just use my microphone and a few vocal sounds. <laughs> for the gunshots I spat into the mic, I just grunted a bit for the death sound of the main protagonist, and then for the ninjas I actually just made a little hissy sound with my mouth. It doesn't actually matter how accurate the sounds are because when you're listening to a game you kind of just want things that indicate uh, what is actually going on. Then we want some dialogue and I just said let's do this at the start of every single match because that's all that needs to be said. It's not a very complex game that you need a lot to be said. So I just made a let's do this line. Let's do this. Yeah that's me trying to sound cool and deep voiced. Anyway, moving on to the final thing, which is ambient sounds, and for this we are in a desert, so we're going to need some wind effects. Now how are we going to create this without paying for wind effects? You could just go outside with a microphone, record the wind in the trees, and that would be enough to do it. But for me, we're lazy in here, we don't go outside, we just blow into the microphone with our mouths, and it comes up with something like this. Yeah, it sounds stupid when you know how it's made, but the sound does work and we just added a bit of reverb so it gives it a bit more, you know, echoey sounds in there. Of course we import all of that into Unity and then we make a few audio sources on our manager function and then from the manager we actually make a public function that can be called by another game object and we make that called the sound. Of course all of this sound is recorded in Audacity which is an incredible piece of software that is 100% for free. Again, link in the description below. Next up we want to make some UI or GUI and we are going to do this using the canvas tool in Unity. Of course we just add text components whenever we need it, we position them where we want and now we are going to go out here and grab some fonts online, but wait a minute, how do we do this for free? Well there are certain fonts that have certain licenses that you guys need to know and one of them is the OFL license or the open font license. This license pretty much says that you can use it in your games or in any way. It's similar to the Creative Commons license. You can use it and mold it and put it onto something and put it as part of something, but you cannot sell it on its own. It's fairly easy to find. What you want to do is go to a site like defont.com and usually they have a filtering process. You want to filter it to public domain. Now just because it says public domain on Defont does not necessarily mean that it's an open font license. You want to check the license whenever you download it to make sure that it has an OFL license file. Actually it's just a text file. Now fonts can be a little bit iffy but if you don't want to use anyone else you can of course create your own but of course it's a lot easier to use other people's stuff especially when it comes to this and this is a perfectly legal way to do it in case you are wanting to sell your game once you've distributed it. I went ahead and searched the font.com and came up with the perfect font for this game and of course I just added that into Unity making sure that the license was correct. Despite how useful Photoshop is we can actually use other programs for example GIMP, everyone knows about GIMP, it's the free version of Photoshop pretty much. In Nazi Zombies there is a gun effect on the wall where it's just sort of the outline of a gun, you walk up to it, you purchase it and of course you then get the gun. And I wanted to use this similar progression um, in my game, however I didn't program it in, but I did make the outline of the gun on the wall, just to prove that you do not need Photoshop. So the first thing you need to know is that GIMP or GIMP is actually a very good software, it's pretty much Photoshop except it's 100% for free, go download it now if you do not have any sort of photo editing software, other than of course maybe paint. 
Of course, our game has a sort of blocky feel to it, so we don't want a nice sort of painted on gun effect. We want a blocky pixelated gun effect. And the best way to do this is to actually use um, some software or a website that has actually been made to do that. And of course I use Piskel, P-I-S-K-E-L. The link should be down there for that website as well. And basically you just make little pixel art and you can animate it and of course download it later in the sprite sheet uh, and you can use it in your game. So I made a little gun thing, I imported it into Unity, slapped it onto a plane, and there we have, we can add it anywhere that we want. Next up is particles, and I noticed that when our characters actually die, they just disappear, and it's not very exciting, it's pretty boring to be perfectly honest, and because I didn't animate it, it doesn't look very good. However, we can use particle systems to make it look better by having everyone die with a bit of a blood effect that sort of di di distorts our attention from the fact that it's just disappearing, instead it's being replaced with a bit of blood. And the way I do this, of course, is to create a new material and just color it a different color. For example, the blood was red, and I also made another particle system that just explodes whenever it, uh, the bullet will hit a rock, or hit the sand, or hit anything other than a player. So particle systems are pretty easy. All you do is just fiddle with the knobs until you get something that you like. For example, with the blood effect, I kind of like an explosion, um, because it just sort of gives a bit of impact. That's pretty much it. Just instantiate it whenever something dies, and you're good to go. Now we move on to the final part of creating our game, which is of course the image effects, or better known as post-processing. Now this was introduced fairly recently with the new 2017 version of Unity that I just downloaded, and it is really cool, but you need to externally download the post-processing files so that you can use it in your game. I think it's still in beta, and that's kind of why it exists like that. Now for this I just added a few things to get the sort of heat gaze that you get from a desert environment. I added a bloom effect to the camera and I also added a vignette so that we can center down our attention to the character in the very center. Then I added a bit of color grading and for this I just amped up the low end to be a little bit blue and the mid tones to be a little bit purple and the high tones to be a bit more brighter orange yellow. There we have it, that's our game. We had already extended the time that we predicted a little bit, but we have something that's workable. We have something that we can move on to, we can push forward later um, if we so choose. Of course, all that is left is distribution, and of course there is places like Steam that everyone wants to get on. We want to use something that is of course free, and there is no better place than Itch.io and Game Jolt. Those are my two favorite. There are of course a lot more out there that you guys can choose, but I like to use those two because it gives the option of actually gaining money from your games and also the pay what you want system, which I think is just beautiful. You can also of course distribute it for free and you can also label it as a prototype. This place was made to handle prototypes. No one's gonna get pissed off that there's an unfinished game on there for this reason. However, if you do try and get on Steam Greenlight and you actually get through, which would be amazing with something like this, then you're gonna run into trouble with, of course, a lot of people hating on the fact that Unity games suck, which they don't. So I decided to upload to Itch.io, and if you want to play the game, it is available in the description below. And of course, I think I talked about everything I need to talk about. If there's anything I missed out and you guys would like to hear next week, comment section down below. Also, if you guys like these type of videos, then please tell me. Uh, I like to know. <laughs> anyway, thank you everyone for watching. I'm going to go ahead and have some breakfast and hopefully you guys have a productive day as well. Hopefully this has inspired you to try and make a game within three hours. Upload it to Itch.io, send it to us. We always love to play your stuff. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time.